I'm here with Shana Hart Knox Cox. All right, um, you know, for those of you guys who don't know, she's got that name from me. Uh, I it's an honor to when you receive a name, uh, if you're a competitor from your instructor uh, or from your coach, uh, it, it's kind of a way of being able to honor the academy. And because of her story in life and her fighting style and just the way that she you know, carried herself and where she came from and what she had to deal with. I thought this name was very suitable and apropos. I always name the fighters after their second fight because I, I like to kind of get the feel, the feel of them from that first fight and see, you know, where they are. Make sure it's kind of not, not like a fluke. Watch your training, watch your next fight. And after that, she became Hard Knox Cox. So how are you today? I am doing very well. Um, that name has definitely stuck with me since I've got it. So <laughs> that's, that's, I love that name. Um, and um, it's so funny because um, I think at first uh, we were thinking something else and then you're like, no, 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 I got it. <laughs> and then we came uh, down. So yes, and I've uh, had it ever since. So yeah. 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 No, I think it's very suitable. I, I always think that when when you're a coach or you're a instructor, they have a better view of yourself than you do. And sometimes we we come up and we think about these cool names that we have or whatever, we have these ideas, and it just may not really suit who we are. So when you get an opportunity to receive that um, stamp of approval from your, your coaches or your instructors, you definitely want to represent it well. No, no disrespect to anybody who came in with their name or wanted to keep their name, but I think that as time progressed, it was suitable then, and then it continued yes. to do well as you continue with your martial arts. Yes. All right, so um, we're celebrating 25 years of Academy of Super Ties. It's our 25th year anniversary. I think it's huge. A lot of uh, academies of styles did not make it systems this long. Um, and in 25 years, uh, what we want to do is we want to kind of gather 25 uh, you know, testimonials from individuals who's trained in the martial arts and, um, and specifically in Sudan Thai and um, kind of see what kind of impact or influence that, if any, it has had on these individuals over this, uh, over their lifetime and since we've been obviously doing this. So the first thing I want to just ask you, just to be able to get everybody familiar with you, is when did you join the academy? Um, originally, I joined uh, when I was around 14 or 15, so that would have been uh, 2012 um, or maybe the beginning of 2013, um, but uh, for the most part, uh, I would say somewhere between 14 and 15 years old for sure. Okay. Um, yeah. What programs did you train in at the Academy? Now, for those who don't know or are not familiar with it, uh, Suta is a freestyle, and we actually have uh, many different programs uh, that we teach. And some people train in multiple ones. Some people just train in just the one. Whether we have traditional uh, martial arts, which is uh, largely based in Tang Sudo, was our base martial art. Uh, we have uh, weapons classes. We have uh, MMA mixed martial art classes, boxing program, a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu program, a kickboxing program, both just regular kickboxing as well as cardio kickboxing as well. So there are several things that individuals could train in at the academy. So what program or programs did you train in? Um, well, uh, to start, um, I uh, did the kickboxing class. I did the mixed martial arts class. Um, I also started in karate. Um, when things first started, I started in karate. Um, I did cardio kickboxing with Mrs. Gavings. Um, I did uh, catch wrestling eventually with Shamal. Um, I did uh, boxing training uh, with Coach Ira. Um, we've had um, also fight camps, which yeah. were great. <laughs> um, I know some people probably don't want to think about those right now, but we had it. And it, it was actually, uh, it was very rewarding in the end. So I will say that um, now... Another thing is uh, why I said I started with karate is because I think once I got a feel for what it is that I wanted to do, um, that that was a little bit more. It was slower for me than the other right. than the right. other classes, just for me, yeah. even though I should have taken the class because I think it would have made me a lot better in what I was doing. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, when I first started, I'm thinking. This, this, it takes a lot more time and effort to to do that. You know what I'm saying? And at that time, me being young, I was thinking, oh, I don't, you know, I don't want to do all that. But 
um, looking back at it now, I wish I would have actually stayed in karate and um, I probably would have been a lot further now. Um, I've also uh, done jujitsu. Um, and that's obviously one of the more recent things that I've done um, with uh, doing the uh, tournament that you had um, the past uh, year. So. So pretty much well rounded. He pretty much did everything. <laughs> yes. Even even wrestling. I, I forgot to throw that in there as well as, as you yes. also. So in your wrestling training that we had as well. So one thing I like that you you highlighted and you pointed out, which I think is is really um key, is that even first and foremost, the reason that we offer a lot of different programs and we, we specialize in all those different things or have individuals who specialize in them and teach them is because number one, not everybody um, has the same type of uh, uh, taste or pace or, or, or expectation for what it is. Yeah, yes, some sir. things are just, uh, some people gravitate towards certain things a little bit more than somebody else does. Mm -hmm. and some things just seem to be a little bit more, um, you know, reflective of what a person is looking for in their martial art journey or their career. But Absolutely. you were a competitor and you were a fighter and you did point out the fact that you do wish that despite the fact that it was slower, you know, and with you being younger, you couldn't appreciate the development of it, that it would have overall made you better, you know, had yeah. you stuck with it, you know, and then just kind yeah. of got that nice round uh, foundation and those roots in the martial arts, you believe mm -hmm. that it would have helped you be more successful in your competitive, uh, in combative, sorry, combative endeavors. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Um, and another reason I say that um, is because uh, it's it's a lot more discipline as well. And you need that when, when you're a fighter, you need discipline, whether it's good or bad, you need discipline. Um, and sometimes the bad discipline is, is still good in a way, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's the most important thing, I think, as a fighter is for you to be number one, well-rounded. And then another thing is to be disciplined, whether you you like it one day, you might not, you know, but it, it's very, very rewarding at the end. As a fighter, you, you should want to have that discipline. And back then, I, you're right, I couldn't appreciate it. But as I look back at it now, yes, I wish I would have done Yes. And what I've noticed as a instructor and a, a, a fight coach as well is that when you start talking about people competing in mixed martial arts and competing in kickboxing and things like that, you see people try to skip steps. So they just yeah. try to jump and leapfrog right over to this particular step without getting that traditional karate training or that traditional boxing or kickboxing or whatever. And then mm -hmm. there become some deficiencies that's there because maybe their footwork um, isn't quite as sharp and crisp as somebody else's. Maybe their defense, maybe their timing. And then they're trying to compete on a stage with individuals who took all of those steps and embraced that entire journey. And then mm -hmm. it becomes difficult because when toughness alone isn't just a key and you have to have a certain skill set, these individuals simply may not have it and it makes it difficult to be able to keep up. So Correct. I thought that was interesting that you did bring that up. Yes. Yeah. And um, also, um, when, when you go into competing, um, you you never know who it is that you're going into that cage with. You know what I'm saying? You can you can uh, watch their videos. You can you can see um, their training or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? It, it it won't change anything when you go in that cage. You don't have what it is that you need. So that's true. That's true. Yeah. Great point. Great point. So what made you decide to start training to begin with? Um, originally, um, I wasn't the best kid, uh, so um, I was getting into a bunch of trouble. Um, and my grandma, who uh, took care of me, she raised me, she told me that I needed to find something to do or she would find something to do for me. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I, um, I had seen that there was a new school that had opened up. It was right up the street from my house, so it wasn't far. It would be easy to get there, and it just so happened to be a um, mixed martial arts school. <laughs> so, um, I, I went in, um, I talked with you, um, and uh, we, we kind of got a feel of what it was that was going on. Um, I think my goal uh, coming there was to was to be better for the age that I was. Now, the things that I were doing were things that I shouldn't have been done things that shouldn't have been done. So what I needed was not necessarily um, a home, but somewhere to go, a home away from home. You know what I'm saying? Some, somewhere else to be safe at, which was the school. Yeah. So 
that that's why I started there. Um, and it, as you can see, I've done <laughs> pretty well as I've grown. So um, I needed I needed to uh, I needed to be somewhere where I would still get I would get the discipline, but still get the love. And I got both of those there. So, you know, and it, it um, at first I was like, oh, this won't do nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then, and then you went me right into shape. So, <laughs> so that's why I started. Um, I, I wasn't the greatest kid and I had a lot of things going on at home. Um, I was, uh, me and my sister, our mom passed when we were younger, so um, we needed a little bit more guidance than obviously other kids, you know what I'm saying? And um, grandma was always there, of course, yeah. but she was also a grandma. She's done this many times. So yeah. with us, it was like, you know, I, I got to let my grandkids be my grandkids, you know, and I can do what I can do from a distance. But, you know, and she did that, but I, I needed to uh, have that parental <laughs> guidance so and and that's what you guys did for me i think it's important that you did i think it was awesome that you brought up and it's important to point out the fact that you know number one despite the fact that you may not have been the best kid or, or making the best decisions that you 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 were knowledgeable enough you know and real enough with yourself to say hey listen like i'm doing things and hanging out in places and environments that I simply shouldn't be doing things that shouldn't be doing and wanted to place yourself in an environment in which you said was a safe place and a place where it gave you a level of accountability. All right. And then also, like you said, discipline, and then also be able to still get that love. You're part of a family unit, a team unit. There was a certain level of accountability that had to go along with that. And you, you were, you had enough wherewithal to be able to know and realize like most people, they shun that. You know, they, they run away from it. They run in the opposite direction because they want to be uh, in those circles, you know, of, of, of negativity and of people doing things or with minimum to, to no um, um, uh, uh, parental guidance or, or you know, um, with nobody looking over them, you know, with, no, yeah. with nobody watching over them. They want to be able to have that level of freedom. But mm -hmm. you, you, you knew that the academy was ultimately a place that would be a safe place and a safe space and that will give you those things. So I think that it's important to be able to point out, number one, that you felt that way about an academy of any sort. And then number mm -hmm. two, that you had enough knowledge to be able to say, hey, you know what, this isn't good for me, this level of freedom that I have in the streets and the circles and the environments in which I'm hanging. I need to go somewhere where I can be accountable and there can be some level of discipline, and then there could be someone overseeing me on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, what is your fondest memory? What would you say your fondest memory is of having been at the Academy? Um, now, I have a bunch of memories, um, <laughs> but I would probably start uh, with maybe when I first started, um, I wasn't as confident as I wanted to be. Um, so, um, you know, as the days went on, um, I think, I think there was, uh, I think maybe it was a kickboxing class that we were doing. Um, and I was, I was, I was training and, um, I think we were going into open mat. Um, this is maybe my third open mat, third or fourth open mat. Um, I didn't really want to punch hard because <laughs> I thought it would hurt someone. <laughs> So, um, which wasn't the case, obviously, <laughs> but I, I, I thought I would hurt someone. So, um, you, my trainer, um, you, you went through the steps with me, you know, um, and you kind of told me just kind of let loose, you know, let it go. And once I've done that, you know, I, I kind of felt my confidence and, um, after some time, it, it obviously built higher and higher and higher. But that one time was, was something to remember because you took the time out to just simply help me, even though you had a class of people. So that, that's one of my fondest memories that they can. And just so everyone knows, and I've, I tell this to anybody that listens, she is one of the hardest hitters. Um, she <laughs> fought at 125 pounds. <laughs> that trying to get her to make that weight all the time, but that's what she fought at. And she was one of the hardest hitters that to this day for me holding pads for, um, other than uh, maybe uh, uh, my son, Isaiah Jr., and mm -hmm. maybe one or two other people, but definitely top five of that's male and female 
of the hardest hitters that I've ever held for before. And that comes from having to women, they take the time out to develop the proper technique. Guys, a lot of times we overcompensate with power, you know, and, and, and arm punch and things like that. We don't put our hips and our, our feet and, and everything into it, all the, the mechanics. But women, they take the time a lot of times because they are smaller in frame or they're, they're not gifted with a lot of those muscles and strength that a lot of the guys is. So that when they develop the technique and then they couple that with the power that they have, it is very dynamic. So, you know, definitely still to this day, that's why she's hard knocks because definitely one of the hardest strikers that I've held for and even had to sprawl with her because the other guys were afraid to sprawl with her. Well. So, you know, definitely, definitely uh, glad that you developed that confidence and that you were able to be able to kind of let go. Uh, I know that a lot of times the things that we are told not to do that's frowned upon at home in society it's difficult when you go to a place. That's why it's important that you find that place that's that's special and suitable suited for you. When, when you go in and someone says, forget everything they say out there, here yeah. you you can yell loud. Here you can be yeah. hard. Here you can yeah. be this version of yourself. And then when you are, then it just feels like a relief because it says, hey, you know what? I can just let go. I can let loose. I'm at home. So yes. I'm glad that that was a fond memory of you, that you were able to develop that level of confidence in that memory. Um, what impact did the martial arts, more specifically, the Academy of Sudu Thai, have on you and on your life? On me, um, it now everyone there is literally family. I can I can call anyone that I've trained with, and I can talk to them. Uh, well, mostly, <laughs> but I can call mostly anybody there. Um, so this this wasn't a one time thing, you know what I'm saying? This was something that has stuck with me for a very very long time. I mean, to go from a teenager into adulthood and still have a, a group of people with you is is it's unheard of sometimes. You know what I'm saying? You you don't really get that. So um, that is something that um, has impacted me a lot because, uh, like I said earlier. Um, you were like my dad in a way, you know what I'm saying? Miss Gathams was like a mom. So it, it was always family. And that was very, very important to me. And that was something that I needed at the time. You know what I'm saying? So to still have that is a great thing. You know what I'm saying? And I, I could still contact you or whomever, you know, to check on you or whatever the case may be. And now I'm a mom, you know what I'm saying? So it, time, time has passed on and um, everything that I've learned there has stuck with me. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just did the tournament. Was that what December? Was that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was I just did a that, tournament. That, that we were in the United with a couple people. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. So it's 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 just good to have people where you can still go back and do what it is that you love. Um, and everyone is so busy now. You know what I'm saying? Because everyone mm -hmm. everyone has kind of branched off and started doing different things, which is which is a great thing too. Right. You know what I'm saying? But. Um, the 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 separation obviously and the inconsistency on my part obviously um it it kind of took away from those things but all in all you know what i'm saying um you guys have always been a big big part of my life um like family um and uh the things that i've learned have not only been good for me but also the people around me because some people all the time are like oh you box oh my god can you teach me something I'm like no you, you can go uh you can go write my trainer and ask them how much it costs because right. <laughs> <laughs> i had to you know i had to do the hard work so they got to do the hard work too but right. i have some right. people that look up to me is what i'm saying and and that's also a good thing um you have young girls who you know they don't they don't really have much or whatever the case may be and you gave me the knowledge to be able to give to them so that's a, that's another good thing and um you have kids in school that are being bullied or whatever the case may be i have a niece um she recently just went through um went through an incident at school um and the girl hit her she's very She's very shy and timid. She didn't hit her back. And the first thing my sister did was call me. <laughs> so so I could come over and kind of, you know, give her a little bit of confidence. And the only reason she was able to do that is because of the academy. So um, that is something that they've done for me. And it has stuck with me for a very, very long time. You know, I'm glad you brought up um, about people looking up to you. Uh, because one thing I, I will say is that you, know, you develop quite the following um, over, over time. 
And what a lot of people may not understand is when you come from, you know, a lot of the the, 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 the neighborhoods, you know, the impoverished neighborhoods and things like that, where we really don't have much to hang our hats on. Um, when you find something that's kind of your niche, you know, and you, you, you really start to become good at it, you'll have a lot of those individuals that come out to be able to support you. And when you were going to the, uh, I'm sorry, when you were competing and, um, and have those fights and things like that, I remember it just being your sisters, you know what I mean, at first, you know what I mean? And then when your cousins was there, and then each time you came, there was more tickets being sold, there were more people following you, there was people commenting on all your social media. And yes, sir. It's, 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 really, it's really easy when you're doing something that you're passionate about, you're good at, you know, um, to be able to develop that following in the neighborhood because people really want to look and they want that push behind you. And they want to say, hey, I know this person. This person was able to do something positive and they were able to make it out of the hood. You know, so you, you definitely develop that following over time. Um, yes, sir. You have people look up to you. And I think that's awesome that the that the martial arts are something that you were passionate about or were passionate about at the time was able to afford you that opportunity to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, what would you say to a person who is... Um, you know, they are nervous and they're considering either starting their training or maybe coming back to train. What would you say to a person? Don't be afraid because there's really nothing you can do wrong. And a person who knows nothing actually hits the hardest. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> so, uh, so when you go in there, you know, you don't, you don't base, you don't base, your level on someone else's. You might have someone that you train with that's a pro fighter and, and that's their status. You know what I'm saying? You have to worry about your status. Eventually you will get there. It, it will take some time, but you will get there. Some people move quicker than others. You know what I'm saying? And that's okay. But it's it's okay. Just go in there. You know what I'm saying? Listen to your trainers. That's very, very important because uh, if you do start competing, listening to your trainers will be a big part of of whatever fight you're doing or whatever competition it is that you're doing. So um, always listen to your trainers, but at starting, just just don't don't overthink it because the, that's probably the worst thing that you can do. It's, it's nothing you can physically do wrong when you start. It's, it, I, for me, I don't feel like there's nothing you can physically do wrong. Um, I think you should just kind of go in there and do it. Um, some people start it, they don't like it. You know, some people, some people start it and they love it. So I think it's just a just of you going to do it. So do it. <laughs> and, there's, and there's two different schools of thoughts because when you have the person that's brand new, a lot of times they try to base their, what they feel their experience will be based on yeah. either something they've seen on television or something mm -hmm. that they've heard from somebody else. And a lot of yeah. times when we share these stories, we're sharing stories uh, of our training, you know, and these were much more advanced time situations. So if you're hearing that somebody had to do all these exercises or they had to fight all these people, that wasn't what it was like when you first came in the door. You know, this Correct. was over a, a period of, of, you know, months and years probably down yes, the line. Right. And this is, sometimes these things are even anomalies. They're not something that are, are commonplace. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean that that will be your experience. Mm -hmm. What a lot of people don't realize is that as instructors, we enjoy working with people when they're brand new because they are a clean slate. Mm -hmm. Their cup is empty, it's not half full. Yeah. You yeah. have someone come in with some previous knowledge and expectations. They come in and they kind of, oh, over here, this is how we used to do it over here, or I'm used to doing mm -hmm. it this way. And yes. it's just like, they're much more difficult individuals to be able mm -hmm. to break up those habits yes. and teach. So mm -hmm. they definitely shouldn't be afraid because coming in the door brand new, that's good for them and good for us because we have no expectations, as you just said, exactly. you can't do anything wrong, you know, and then they get an opportunity to be able to formulate their uh, experience just, you know, on their own and not yes. based on what they thought or what they've heard from someone else. Yeah, you're, you're kind of able to find yourself as a, as w whatever it is that you want to do. But as a competitor, you kind of find yourself. And I think that's very important. So when and another thing I would say is uh, going into uh into training, uh, just take care of yourself. You know, that's that's important too. You want to make sure you're taking care of yourself or at least on the road to it. You you have to take good care of yourself. That's another thing. And then on the flip side, you have people that are returning to training. Though They are basing um, things off of how it was at one point in time. Um, oh, I used to be able to do this. I was able to do that. Oh, I'm not happy because 
the same people aren't here anymore. This isn't this way. This isn't that way. And it's like, you know what? Probably a little bit older than we were before. All right. It's okay. The class mm -hmm. and the training is going to pace based on who you are now and where you are now. Correct. So you look at your former self or your former mm -hmm. group or your former situation and compare it because much like anything else in life, life is fluid and things change. So we shouldn't be afraid yes. to get back out there because I'm not in that same shit that I was in before mm -hmm. or it, things aren't exactly the same as before. And like yes. you said, you just pointed out, if you're taking care of yourself in the process, then it's definitely doable 100%. So great. Point. Absolutely. Yes. And then also um, for me, um, returning to the academy after being gone for a while, it takes a, it does take a toll on your body. You know, it does because you, you haven't been training or you haven't been doing the things that your body is used to. Once you make that change, your body's like, what's going on? You know, yeah. so when you when you go back into training, you, you kind of have to not necessarily like your first time, but you, you have to you have to pace yourself because what will happen is you'll try to overdo it, thinking that you're still who you were a year ago or whatever the case may be. And, and you'll overwork yourself. And that's something you don't want to do either. So. That's a good point. All right. And lastly, would you recommend the Academy of Super Tied to, to anyone else? Oh, yes. <laughs> I would recommend it to everyone. Um, I actually want my kids to do uh, to do mixed martial arts. So that'll be something that I'm very interested in. And I would tell anyone else's kids to go there. Um, very, very kid friendly. Um, and to be quite honest, there are a lot of places that are not very kid friendly, you know, so that's very important. When you take your kids somewhere, you want them to be somewhere where you feel like you can drop them off and they're safe. When you come back, you know, pick them up within two hours or whatever, however long the class is, you know, when you drop your kids off, you want to make sure that everything is good, that they're fine. And that's a great place to be if you want your kids to train for uh, karate or MMA or kickboxing or whatever it is that you want them to do. I think that's a great place. Yes, sir. Even adults, too. Of all, well, all ages, I'll say. Yes. And that shows the maturity, as you stated earlier, and growth of you, because, you know, you came in as a teenager or a kid. <laughs> I so, did. And then now you're looking at kid-friendly places now. You're like, yeah. now as a mom, you're like, wait a minute, everywhere is not kid-friendly. You're going there, and now you're looking at everything that's going on yes. as a parent. And that's, yes. that that really shows the, 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 the growth and maturity of you as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we do definitely appreciate your time that you've given and, and all of the, the wonderful things that you were able to share. Um, you know, honestly, I don't know, never know what somebody's going to say, um, you know, in, in these type of things, because at the end of the day, we never really have an opportunity to just sit down and, and listen to the overall experience and how something like uh, the journey of martial arts really impacted somebody. You have a general idea, you know, of what you think, but at the end of the day, to be able to hear someone sit down and articulate, these are the things that this did for me. This is something that was, you know, great moment that I'll never forget. This is mm -hmm. boom, boom, boom. All of those things really makes a huge difference in the big scheme of things and lets us know that the 25 years in which we've been existed thus far has not been in vain. And we've been able to help individuals and provide them with great experiences and memories that will last a lifetime. So absolutely really appreciate that. Yes, sir. You have anything else you want to add? Um, well, what I like to say is um, I think that um, anyone who is interested or who wants to start doing any type of uh, martial arts, I think that they should probably get their plane ticket. <laughs> so <laughs> if they do want to start, they better hurry up and, you know, get their plane ticket and get going. But um, in all seriousness, um, I do want to thank you for the years that you've given me and everyone else. You know what I'm saying? You you don't have to do the things that you do because it's not only training sometimes sometimes you you dip into people's personal lives you know what i'm saying and and that's also a good thing you know that we have someone to do that so um there's been plenty of times where we've had incidents and we were out of town and you were the only other person you know what i'm saying so and you've always taken care of me so i just want to let everyone know he does take care of everyone he's very very honest man a very very honest business so that's that's what i have to say there Thank you so much. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you for all of your loyalty, your commitment, your dedication to the Academy. For always being a phone call the way I called her back in December. I say, you want to go and compete in jujitsu? She had trained a year. She said, absolutely. I'll see you there. No hesitation, no nothing. So thank you for that. And thank you for your yeah. time. Thank you for sharing. 
you know, we love you. There's some people that just really make up the the, the epitome of what Sue Tai stands for and represents. And you are definitely one of those individuals. So thank, thank you so you. much for that. Um, we're so proud of everything that you've done and everything that you're continuing to do as well. And we're just so happy to be a part of your life and be a part of that influence, you know, in thank your life and to, the, to the, the young lady that you've become. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Well, uh, thank you again for your time. Have a blessed day. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, everybody. All right. All righty.